Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines we're tracking for you this evening. The Lal Street ends a range-bound session with marginal losses. Bank stocks rebound. Autos drag. The sell-off in Adani stocks resumes. The group has lost 80,000 crore rupees in market cap over the last three sessions. A report by the Ken shows Adani Group has not made any filings on the release of its pledged shares despite claims to the contrary. Oil prices perk up with Brent moving closer to the $80 mark. The Indian government is set to hike the price of gas by adopting the Kirit Parikh report before the 1st of April. The US commodity regulator files a lawsuit against the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, and its founder alleges violations of compliance rules to attract users, also accuses the exchange of flouting rules meant to prevent money laundering and terror financing. A parliamentary panel on online pharmacies pulls up. The government says it is appalled that stricter rules have not been notified by the health ministry. Warns that illegal, counterfeit or outdated medicines could be sold through these avenues in the absence of regulation. Higher commissions to insurance agents are set to continue, but companies get more flexibility to pay them as per board-approved policies. Insurance regulator also rules that companies must adhere to the expenses of management ceiling from the 1st of April. The Employee Provident Fund organization has announced a minor five basis point interest rate hike to more than six crore active subscribers. This is the first rate hike since FI19 when the EPF rate was cut to its lowest level in more than four decades. Three elementary school children and three school staff shot dead after yet another shooting incident in the U.S. The 28-year-old shooter was also killed by the police. This is the 129th mass shooting incident in the U.S. in just the first three months of this year. Israel's government decides to pause the controversial judicial reforms after mass protests brought the country to a standstill, but protesters vow to remain on the streets until the government withdraws the reforms. If there was something where I could eliminate the money lender, I'd do that. Former HDFC Bank CEO Aditya Puri says he's open to returning to active corporate life. Puri is ready for a comeback if he gets a business that distributes finance in rural India where the money lender can be eliminated. That's the CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Well, let's head straight to the market action. The large street traded in a range ahead of expiry. The Nifty and the Sensex ending the day mildly lower. However, the Nifty did manage to hold on to 16,900. BSC firms are raising a market cap of 1.5 lakh crore rupees today. Adani Group stocks and also stocks led the fall, while financials lent some support. Prashant is standing by with the details. Prashant. Well, absolutely a flat close and uh, pretty much a repeat in, in some ways like yesterday, except the fact that yesterday, that is Monday, we had some semblance of a rally mid-afternoon which fizzled out towards closer a sharp way. Today, we did not have that. Uh, it was very slow price action through the course of the day and we kind of closed gently in the red by about 20, 25 points. Banks, though, did well. Bank Nifty was up about 0.4%. Thank you uh, to one or two specific names, which I will get to in just a bit from now. But between the bank Nifty and the Bank Nifty, some slight divergence. We've seen that on occasion in the past as well, and it hasn't really led us uh, to kind of, uh, you know, those trends continuing in any sustainable way. Uh, on uh, the stocks front, the Adani Group stocks, and I've said that this is an important constituent for retail slash H&I sentiment, uh, they all took a knock, sharp knocks. Ports, Enterprises, Total Gas, Adani Green, Adani Wilmar, they were all in the red. Outside of the, this pack on the Nifty, names like Tech Mahindra, Tata Motors, Hero, ONGC and Bharti were losers. Uh, Indusin Bank was a standout gainer. There was a brokerage report to which it reacted. UPL and Power Grid were the other two notable gainers on the index. In the broader market, I mean, advances outnumbered declines for exactly about 15 minutes after 9.15 when we opened this morning. The lines crisscrossed and we ended deeply negative, almost threes to one in favor of declines today. Losses coming in and in names like Kalyan Jewelers, Divijaya Diagnostic, Raymond Shipping Corporation, Minda Corp. They were gainers as well and only a few volume-led gainers for you. PNC Infra, Spark, Imami, Bank of India, Torrent Power, PNB Housing, the Pipe Maker, ISMT and uh, a few others as well. Uh, you know, globally, things are looking a little better as we start this new week. The pace of activity has slowed down. At least it feels a little lethargic, especially given... Uh, you know, how manic and frenetic the pace of market activity was all of last two weeks. 
Uh, the fear, though, at the margin is that the Nifty perhaps is slowly drifting lower, and eventually we'll see a retest of that 16,800, 16,850 levels. The question is, if it comes to pass, will the market once again respect that for the third time and bounce off those levels in a meaningful way? Back to you. Prashant, many thanks for joining us. Now, the Adani Group has seen its biggest single-day market cap erosion in over a month, this on renewed concerns over repayment of debt. The 10 group stocks were down anywhere in the range of 3 to 7 percent. The group as a whole erased nearly 50,000 crore rupees in market cap in today's session. Now, according to a report by the Ken, the Adani Group has not filed any update on the recent release of pledge shares. Vivek is standing by to take us through the details. Vivek. Well, all of the Adani Group stocks were in focus today and were under significant pressure in today's trading session. Uh, we did get access to a report by the Ken that actually indicated that there may have been a few discrepancies in terms of what the company has reported in terms of reduction of pledge shares and what was actually done by the lenders. Now, the first thing what the Ken is reporting is that no regulatory filings actually indicate reduction in pledge shares post the company's press release. In fact, what they're saying is that the disclosures should have been made to the stock exchanges by the lenders within two working days and by the promoters within seven working days. And these lack of disclosures makes the can believe that the debt has not been fully repaid as yet. Now, there have been three subsequent press releases by the Adani Group from Feb 6 to March 12th. And, you know, the Ken has gone ahead and analyzed each of them. On Feb 6, you know, the Adani Group did say that the promoters are looking to prepay over $1,100 million worth of, you know, uh, debt shareback financing. And this maturity was on September 2024. According to them, the move was going to lead to a release of shares in Adani Ports, Adani Green, as well as Adani Transmission. However, the Ken says that banks have only released the pledge shares as far as Adani Ports is concerned. Now, coming to March 7th, you know, the group said that they have prepaid almost $902 million of share back financing. And according to them, the move was going to lead to a release of shares in Adani Ports, Adani Enterprises, Adani Green, as well as Adani Transmission. However, the Ken says that none of the pledge shares pertaining to this payment have been released by the banks as yet. Lastly, coming to March 12th, you know, Adani Group says that they have completed full prepayment of margin link share back financing aggregating to 2.15 billion dollars however the ken says that none of the promoters pledge shares barring adani ports have been released we reached out to the adani group as well as to the stock exchanges and we are still awaiting a reply from them Vivek, many thanks for joining us. And speaking of the Adani Group, the board of NDTV has appointed former SEBI chairman UK Sina as the non-executive chairperson and independent director. Dipali Goenka, MD and CEO of Wellspun India, has also been appointed as additional director in the capacity of non-executive independent woman director. They've been appointed for a period of two years till March 26, 2025. In the crude market, oil prices softened after rallying in the previous session. However, prices remain higher. Markets were focused on what's happening as far as the global banking financial crisis are concerned. So uh, that's the story playing out as far as the oil market is concerned. But on gas, Reuters reports the union cabinet is likely to adopt the gas pricing formula proposed by the Kirit Parikh panel. Reuters quotes sources saying that the panel has recommended capping the price for local gas at $6.5 per million British thermal units in April. The current price of gas from old blocks is set at $8.57 and is valid from October to March end. Employees Provident Fund Organization India's premier retirement fund body has increased interest rates marginally to 8.15%. The earlier rate of 8.1% was the lowest interest offered to subscribers in four decades. But when compared to other savings instruments, EPFO continues to remain the highest payer. Now, a parliamentary panel led by Congress leader Abhishek Manu Singhvi has urged the Health Ministry to notify draft e-pharmacy rules without any further delays. The panel said, and I quote, it was appalled that the rules haven't been finalised yet. The committee has also expressed concerns over the possible misuse of online pharmacies for the distribution of illegal or counterfeit medicines in the absence of regulations. Now, the insurance regulator has removed segmental limits on commissions for life, general and health insurance agents. Under the new regulations, insurance companies will have the flexibility to pay commissions as per their board-approved policies. However, they will have to ensure that they do not breach the overall expenses of management ceiling that they need to adhere to. The new rules come into effect from the 1st of April. Yash is standing by now to tell us more about these new rules and the impact on insurance companies. Yash. Well, that's correct. So, uh, this has come as a big positive for all uh, life, general and standalone health insurance companies and not just that, uh, policy aggregators like uh 
policy bazaar as well uh, what the insurance regulator that is IRDA and government have done is that uh, they've cleared commission regulations for the insurance sector now under the commission regulations importantly the regulator has removed the segmental limits on commissions currently existing in various segments for example motor has a particular limit health has a particular limit beyond which insurance companies cannot pay commissions uh, for the sale of these policies now these segmental limits have been removed and essentially a headline limit has been imposed as far as expenses of management is concerned what is expenses of management it's essentially a sum total of the commission paid by insurance companies plus uh, their operating expenses other than commission uh, now what will happen is that there will be a headline limit on expenses of management and insurance companies can choose how much they out of that limit they want to pay as commission and how much they want to pay as other operating expenses as i said through this uh, insurance companies will be able uh, to sort of uh, put commissions in different business segments with a, in a more flexible manner for policy aggregators it is positive since they will get a higher commission if the insurance company wants to spend more commission in any particular segment as well uh, this will be of course effective starting uh, the new financial year that is april 1st Promoters of chemical manufacturing company UPL have upped their stake in the entity by 3.5% over the last six months. Their total holding to over 32% as of March. The promoter's stake is now at the highest in 18 years. For the quarter, the stake went up 2%, while for the full financial year, the stake went up by 4%. Shares of Kalyan Jewelers plunged over 9% after shares made 2.7% equity were sold in the open market. Sources tell CNBC TV18 that Hydel Investment, which held over 26% stake, is the seller. Full KYC customers of Paytm will now be able to make payments on all UPI QR code and online merchants where UPI is accepted. This after the National Payments Corporation of India announced interoperability guidelines on the 24th of March. From now on, the bank will earn 1.1% interchange revenue when Paytm wallet customers make payments on merchants acquired by other payment aggregators or banks. The tariff war in the telecom sector has intensified after Reliance Jio announced a new broadband backup plan at 198 rupees a month. The package includes unlimited data at 10 Mbps. This is effectively slashed entry-level rates by half. This will be available starting the 30th of this month. Here's the latest in the race to buy Reliance Capital. Lenders have decided to hold a second round of auction for the debt-ridden company. Sources tell CNBC TV18 the auction will be conducted on the 4th of April. Lenders have decided to set the base bid at 9,500 crore rupees on a net present value basis with a minimum cash component on 8,000 crores. Hinduja Group has hinted it will retain its old offer of 8,110 crores as offered in round one and withdraw the revised higher offer of 8,950 crores which was challenged by Torrent. We will head into a short break, but coming up next, the U.S. Commodity Regulator files a lawsuit against the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, and its founder. More details when we return. Well, Twitter CEO Elon Musk has now said that only verified handles will be able to take part in Twitter polls from the 15th of April. In a tweet, Musk wrote, and I quote, this is the only way for the company to address advanced AI bot swarms. Taking over otherwise, it's a losing battle, end of quote. In another major shakeup, Musk said that only verified accounts will appear in Twitter's recommendation feed. Media conglomerate Disney will begin its first round of layoffs this week. According to reports, Disney is planning to cut 7,000 jobs across divisions. The layoffs are part of the company's cost reduction efforts. Just last month, Disney said that it aims to cut over $5 billion in costs to boost cash flow. Ride-hailing company Lyft has announced that its co-founders Logan Green and John Zimmer are stepping down from their roles as CEO and president. Green will become board chair in April, while Zimmer will become vice chair in June. Former Amazon and Microsoft executive David Fisher will be the new CEO. Arjun, many thanks for joining us. And back home, a quick check of some of the national headlines. Prime Minister Modi reportedly asked BJP MPs to focus on social issues and reach out to people during the party's parliamentary meeting. The meeting comes at a time when the opposition has joined ranks against the government on the issue of Rahul Gandhi's disqualification as MP and the Hindenburg Adani report. 
Congress leader Rahul Gandhi has agreed to vacate his official bungalow after being disqualified as a member of parliament last week. He was given a notice by the House Committee yesterday to vacate the bungalow within 30 days. In a letter addressed to the Lok Sabha Secretariat, Gandhi said he would abide by the details without prejudice to his rights. Three elementary school children and three school staff were shot dead in yet another shooting incident in the U.S. The incident took place at Nashville's Covenant School. The 28-year-old shooter, believed to be an ex-student, was shot dead by the police. This is the 129th mass shooting incident in the U.S. in the first three months of 2023. Ukraine has claimed that Russian forces have launched multiple airstrikes in the last 24 hours. Explosions were reported in capital Kyiv. Officials from Russia warned that Moscow has enough nuclear weapons to destroy any adversary. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has postponed the passage of the controversial judicial overhaul reforms until the next parliamentary session in the country in May. This after the country's biggest trade union declared a general strike yesterday, but protesters have vowed to remain on the streets until the controversial reforms are withdrawn. And before we wrap, former HDFC Bank boss Aditya Puri has told CNBC TV18 he's open to returning to active corporate life. He spoke with Lata on the launch of his book, Aditya Nama, authored by his wife, Anita Puri. When asked about a potential comeback, Aditya Puri said he will return to finance if he gets a chance to eliminate the money lender. All right. And when do we see you actively jump into some company? You said that you know, it may be in pharma, uh, in pharma it may yeah, be in it medical, may be in pharma, healthcare. It could be. If there was something where I could eliminate the money lender, I'd do that. Okay, then that is finance and pharma. And okay. pharma, and because you see, you must understand, uh, Lata, I think Prime Minister Modi has been saying this for quite some time. 60% of India still lives in semi urban and rural India. They've taken roads, electricity, uh, digital, all of it there. And now we have the opportunity to be able to take finance and thereby take them out of the uh, money lending business. I think that that is something that must be done. And if you give them finance, I think it will create another India. Well, a possible comeback there for Aditya Puri. Time will tell. And with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Business 360. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned to see TV 18 The news continues when we return.